Let's kick off the part 2 with the Game Boy port. It was made by Sun L, a Japanese game developer and it looks way worse than the PC port or Master System port or almost any other port for obvious reasons, but I've placed it above the rest cause it's the first port you can actually enjoy. Also, you can play the game wherever you want. The Game Boy's got only two buttons, so does the game, one for punches and one for kicks, but this time when you press the button, it does what it's supposed to do and you can actually play the game and even use special moves when needed. Collision detection is working properly, so when you hit the opponent, it actually registers some damage. The graphics is, well, Game Boy-ish. It's good, but nothing to write home about. Well, it's bloody Game Boy, what do you expect? The music's better than pretty much anything before that, even though it's for a lowly Game Boy. And as you could hear, the sounds are not that good, but not horrible either. AI is not perfect, but not bad. Sun L did a good job on this one, it's a proper good port. At first I didn't want to include Super Street Fighter 2 at all, but after I saw those atrocious PC ports, I wanted to see if there's something better than that for the PC, and I found this. It was ported for DOS by Rosnell Labs in 1996. In this board, all characters behave properly, nothing weird's going on, you can set up difficulty, speed, assign buttons, etc. The graphics are better than anything before, but the aspect ratio is weird for some reason, unless you stretch the screen or play on the widescreen. I very much doubt it was intended for widescreens, given the year of the release that is. So when stretched, it gives you much more space than other ports. The music's in the MIDI format, so it's quite important what sound card you use, but generally the music is tons better than the music for the ports we've seen so far. Good, but still not perfect. The sounds are better quality too. What I've got a problem with though, is the AI. Even when set to hardest difficulty, the CPU is too stupid and predictable, thus the game is too easy. And this is the original Street Fighter 2 made by Capcom, of course. At a first glance, it's superior to anything you've seen in the previous part, so in terms of graphics, it's much better. In terms of sounds and music, again, better, except for the Super Street Fighter 2 for the PC, which sounds a bit better than the arcade. Wow. In terms of gameplay and controls, this is proper Street Fighter 2 and it behaves as it should. From now on, all the ports have pretty much perfect controls, and by perfect, I mean no weird shit is going on like when you press a button nothing happens, or the character flies through another character, etc. So from now on, I'll be judging the ports based on the graphics, sound, music, and overall gameplay. Since I've decided to include the Super Street Fighter for the PC, I have to include Super Street Fighter for other platforms as well, such as this one for the Mega Drive, or Genesis in the US. If I were to compare the graphics between the PC and this one, this one looks a bit worse, and way worse than the World Warrior for the arcade. It's most probably due to hardware limitations of the Mega Drive. But still, it's miles ahead of all the other ports before that. Characters move smoothly, do exactly what you want, and the AI is simply excellent, you can enjoy playing the single player game all day long. The sounds are much worse than on the arcade, very low quality, it's again most probably cause of the cartridge memory limit, but still much better than any port I've tested so far. The music's also much better than the ports before, but still miles away from the arcade. Well, 
What is, however, excellent is controls. It's a proper Street Fighter 2 with all the perks such as 6 buttons and excellent Mega Drive gamepad. I've placed it above the World Warrior Arcade because of the 8 additional characters and improved controls and moves. A slightly better port of Super Street Fighter 2 The New Challengers is for the Super Nintendo. The graphics are very similar to the Mega Drive port but a bit more contrasty, other than that it looks pretty much the same. I fancy the music for SNES a little bit more than for the Mega Drive and the sounds are higher quality too. On the flip side, some sounds are a bit dodgy. <laughs> The gameplay is very similar except for the SNES gamepad. The Mega Drive's got much better joypads and joysticks, so now when I think about it, this sport's not better, let's call it even. The PC Engine port or Turbo Graphics in the US is a full blown Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition made by Capcom. It uses all 6 buttons and even though I said the controls are perfect, that goes for the software. The PC Engine standard joypads are not as good as for instance Mega Drive pad and it may be a little bit frustrating trying to do some special moves. The sounds are good and the music is acceptable. The graphics are better than that of the Super Street 4 reports I've shown you, and much better than anything before that. Not as good looking as the World Warrior for the arcade though, but this is a better game overall. It's great in pretty much every way, you can play the game, you can enjoy the game, it's just an excellent Street 4 report, given the hardware limits there is. The Mega Drive port was also made by Capcom and it looks and behaves identical to the PC Engine port, but the Mega Drive's music sounds much better to my ears, so I've placed it above the PC Engine. The sounds are roughly the same. The SNES port or the Super Famicom in Japan is visually identical to the Mega Drive or the PC Engine but it's got nicer character names and on the flip side it's got horrible transitions on the background, the characters and the rest look pretty much the same. What's different however is the sound and the music. I fancy some stage music on the Mega Drive better and others on the SNES. The sounds are much better than on the Super Street Fighter port for the SNES, the gameplay is identical to the Mega Drive or the PC Engine, that's why I call this even. Sharp X68000 is a Japanese owned computer which is known for being a great platform for arcade port and Street Fighter 2 is such a port. The graphics are exactly the same as the arcade champion edition so there's nothing else to say to that. For the music you can choose between an FM synth and MIDI. Even though I generally fancy the MIDI a lot more, in this case the FM synth is much better for some reason. The music sounds better than what the arcade offers, but it's a bit muffled, maybe because it's emulated, I don't know. <laughs> The 
There's also a problem with the sound. Because of the hardware limitations, the X68000 can't play multiple sound effects simultaneously. Unless you've got X68030, then it's fine. Also, the sounds are, are a bit more pronounced and a little bit sharper than in the arcade version. Pretty much the perfect port. Again, this is the original Champion Edition. The sharp port is almost the same with some minor differences here and there, mainly the sound and the music, so let's call it even. FM Towns is another Japanese M computer with rather unusual name. This version of Super Street Fighter 2 is better than those for consoles, mainly because of its CD soundtrack that was rearranged for the FM Towns. The graphics are somewhat between the consoles and the arcade, it lacks some animations here and there and other bits and bobs. To be honest, I'm not too familiar with the FM Towns or its emulator, so I may have done something wrong, but the emulator won't allow me to use anything else but two buttons, even though the game is apparently made for six. When I tried to use six button controls, it was behaving strangely, so I had to finish the game using just two. Other than that, the game was working just fine, good response and all. This version of Super Street Fighter 2 is much better than those for consoles or the PC. Well, it's the original Super Street Fighter 2 and I like it a little bit more than the Champion Edition. It's got pretty much the same graphics with some minor changes here and there, such as different roster, colors, font, or some minor details like this Ghetto Blaster. You can choose more characters, old characters have more moves, and music is a little bit better. <laughs> This port looks exactly the same as the arcade, but it's got better music and sound. Let's see. The graphics look the same as the new challengers, at least the new challengers for the arcade, with a little bit different roster and character health bars. The music and sounds are pretty much the same as in the new challengers. The characters have even more moves, and that's why I placed it above the new challengers. Well, the 3DO port should probably be below the arcade, which has nicer graphics, but the 3DO has better rearranged music on the CD, which is different than the one for the FM Towns, and you can choose from a variety of controllers, and you can play the game at home, if there weren't any emulators, of course. So let's call this even as well.
The port for Sega Saturn is much better than the one for the 3DO. It's got better graphics than the 3DO port and much better controllers. The music's also rearranged for the CD, but for some reason it's again different arrangement than the one for the FM Towns or the 3DO. Round one, fight! And the winner is, at least to me, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo for DOS. Yes, you heard right, for DOS. It's the best port there is, but unfortunately it's simultaneously the worst port there is. Let's have a gander at the best bit first. The graphics are the same as the arcade machine with uh, one quite weird difference. For some reason it's a little bit zoomed in, which somebody may not like, but I prefer it. It looks better in our fancy closer quarters. The sounds are a bit better than on the arcade, but what's worlds apart is the music. Well, the tunes are the same, obviously, but they were again rearranged for the PC, but this time you can choose between the CD music and MIDI, and boy, all of them are bloody brilliant. What's rather interesting when you want to use MIDI is lack of general MIDI option in the setup. You can choose from various FM synth cards, but if you want some sort of wavetable, there are only two options, the Sound Blaster or 32 or the Gravis Ultrasound. I've never seen this before, but it was sort of a good choice, it sounds glorious with the Gravis, not sure about the or 32 though. The CD music is also cracking. What makes this port also very good is its difficulty. When set to hardest, it's proper hard, it's really challenging and the AI is not retarded. If the game's so good, why did I say it's the worst port you ask? Well, there's a small problem with the game running on fast CPUs. Well, the problem is quite big actually. If you've got a fast CPU, the attack buttons don't work or are extremely unresponsive. The slower the CPU, the better it gets until it's just proper playable. So when using a slow CPU, let's say 486, it's the best port. When using a fast CPU, it's the worst port cause you can't play it. And there you have it. I thought it's gonna be a short video, it turns out to be quite long and it's gonna become even longer. I plan to make part 3 with just a music comparison, maybe. So if you've got something to say, leave a comment and bye for now.